country life. Yep, it's gonna be de- good. Yeah. Makes you speak weird. <laughs> it is good to be out of the city. Yeah. Dalesford. Oh, Dalesford. It's got a pretty good footy rep, hasn't it? Doesn't it? What are we doing? Mate, when I first put this, you know, itinerary together with the producers, I, there were a few places that I, I wanted to go to, mainly because of the produce and, you know, all what people were doing with the great produce. And there's a lady called Sharon out here at a place called The Fermentry, and she basically ferments a lot of stuff. Now it's just exploded for her. Good? Yeah. <laughs> Always good. I didn't really expect this. No. Anyway, that seems to be a recurring theme. The big doors? These Should we go in them? Ah, oh, the, the one that says Firmatry. Yeah, okay. Hello. 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 How are you going? Good, how are you? I'm Andy. Hi, Andy. I'm nice Sharon. Nice to meet you, Sharon. You too. Welcome to the Firmatry. Nice Hi, to Ben. You. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for coming. No worries. No worries. We're excited. Good. Andy's been telling me about it. This is the this place. Is the production house. Hey. How did you get into fermentry? I've really fermented since I was in my early 20s. Yeah. Um, just travelled around the world and uh, got stuck in Japan for about six years. But I made friends with some older ladies and they were had a garden and taught me how to make miso and things like that. Yeah. As I went around and travelled further, I got hooked into sourdough and making cheeses and wherever I lived, I did a different ferment, not really realising that all of my hobbies were under the same, same umbrella. Yeah, yeah. Same About science. five years ago, I was living in Brussels and my youngest daughter got ill. And at the end of it, I'd read and been told by a naturopath to give us some live probiotic food. And then when I read about it, I was like, oh my God, I know oh, how to make all of these oh, things. Yeah. So I came home and quickly made them all, but then my kitchen started looking like this. Yeah. And as I made friends, People came over and they were asking me and I was impassioned with it because it had helped my daughter get better. Yeah. It's grown pretty slow and steady yeah. since then. What, did, what did you start with? Was it like krauts and kimchi or where, did, where was it like? Uh, water kefir, milk kefir and sauerkraut. Right. I, I base all of our ferments on things that you don't need to start a culture for, that you can use that happen sp- spontaneously except for things that need a fungus or a scoby. And yeah. a scoby is a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. Yep. Yep. And that's what kombucha is, milk yep. kefir is, and water kefir. Everyone knows kombucha. Surely by now. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, a lovely fresh mother. Oh, look at that one. Yeah. It's, it's see-through, pretty much. Um, do you want to hold it? Yeah, I love the feel of it. <laughs> kombucha is made out of tea, so if you're clever, you'll blend a beautiful blend of teas that it feeds on the tannins and the different chemicals in tea. Mm-hmm. Like for people at home, it is really satisfying to do. You do all this weird and wonderful stuff and then you put it away and you keep tasting it and it keeps doing its thing and then by the time, you know, three to seven to ten days comes around, you've got yourself something that you made with a bacteria in there, yes. which you can't get sick from. Like, no. Because it looks a little strange yeah. on top. The people go, ooh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, you know, once you get used you to that. You get sick from that. So my favourite things, actually, at the moment, are things that you don't need scobies for. So the two best would be fermenting anything with honey. Yeah. This is just garlic and honey. Right. Mm. That's it. And as soon as you put the garlic in, within 12 hours, the honey goes liquidous and fizzy. And this is probably about six months old. And really? The, yeah. So you can do... Can you I can, taste the garlic? Yeah. Honey's a great preservative. It's a good one. Yes, honey's... We make mead out of honey, yeah. but um, you can put peaches in there and they'll turn into bright yellow, beautiful yeah. flavoured peaches. Yeah. But how's that? Wow. Yeah. So you can use this honey as a... I guess, Whoa. Whoa. Can you smell it? As a cough medicine. Right. Things like that. But... Um, Does it taste good, though? Drizzling some over lamb okay. or a bit of blue yeah. cheese. Yeah. Oh, that's the bomb. Or getting a, one of the garlic cloves, chopping it up finely and putting it on. So it smells like an Asian dressing. Yeah. Like a, a little Asian marinade. Like a spoon. You yeah. want to taste the yeah, garlic and it. the honey? Yeah. Take your medicine. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. <laughs> oh, that's epic. That's that's really good. Yeah. Just at home, get a jar, put honey in it. Because for a lot of people, the garlic in. for a lot of people, honey is so it's yeah, too yeah. sweet for them. Like, yeah. That is... Yeah. If you made one yourself within three days, taste it every day, and it's go it changes <laughs> over time. Hey, I'm getting that much inspiration from here. Oh, I love this. This is I'm doing this as soon as I get on. Yeah. Yep. That I think we've got some up there. 
So does it need to be raw honey? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Yes, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Did you have garlic? Oh, that's good. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, that's really good. This, I've had this at a workshop, so it's been in my car, but this grew its own kombucha mother, a vinegar mother. No this way. Is, yeah, this is just from rotten persimmons. Look at that. That's a serious one, I'm too. I'm looking crazy now, I know, but this oh, is... I love this. Crazy now. <laughs> this is... Feel this. Put your hand out, ready. I'm going to pass it. It feels different to the kombucha one, right? Yeah. It feels softer. It's heaps and... softer. It's more gelatinous. Yeah. It's almost like that's... rubber. I mean, you can sell it as fake boobs. Is that bad? <laughs> boobs? Yeah. Silicon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, that's my... <laughs> more <Sorry>. natural. <laughs> this is a drink made just out of juniper berries. It's just juniper berries. With what, like, with water and lemon? Or there is. The, the, the yeast is on the outside of the juniper berry, and all it needs is to be added to water to soften the shell. It's uh, maybe four or five months later. Bottled it, put some lemon in it, a little tiny tad of sugar, and that's that fizzy drink. Is it going to be boozy? Probably. Not, <laughs> just a little bit. I don't know what it tastes like. I'm a bit Probably. nervous. Probably. Tastes like gin? That's your best one yet. <laughs> I'm not it's joking. Like, that's delicious. Take a swig. So that's, that's wild ferment. Jesus, it smells good. That is delicious. Which is how all ferment started when they wild ferments. Yeah. Had... You can have this. I'll give it to you. This is, this is actually really, really fizzy. I'm almost scared to... Oh! Yeah, look at that. Oh! oh. That's, Look at it go! Isn't that crazy? Just the yeast from juniper. It actually has a name. It's called smareka. It's the origins of gin. I'll give it to you guys. You can have it later. Uh -huh.